Chemicals have gotten a bad name recently, and today we try to avoid them at all costs and go natural. But is this necessary? Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton, and welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're speaking with Dr. Joe Schwartz about the chemistry of our daily lives. Well, first of all, the basic definition of chemistry, just to get us started, is that it's the study of matter and the changes that matter undergoes, which means it's the study of everything, because matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Whether we're talking about cooking or cosmetics or drugs, we're talking chemistry. Why would you say the idea of chemicals is basically frowned upon today. Well, unfortunately, the word chemical has, has uh, at least in the lay press, been made to be synonymous with toxin, poison, etc., which is very unfortunate because chemicals are just the building blocks of matter. They don't make any decisions. You know, they're not good or bad. It's all a question of how we use them. What would you say is the most common myth about chemistry? I think the single uh, most pervasive myth is that natural substances are somehow superior to, to synthetic. Whether or not anything is dangerous or not, or effective or not, depends on what it is, on what the molecular structure is, on how we studied it, what we know about it, not its origin. There are all kinds of substances that are naturally occurring, which are decidedly dangerous. I mean, you know, start with snake venom and scorpion venom and, and poison ivy. I mean, these are all natural, of course, and perfectly dangerous. What are some chemicals that you would say have unfairly gotten a bad reputation? I would say the, the phthalates, which are substances that are used in, in plastics to make them soft and pliable. And these have been in the news a great deal recently because of papers published in scientific literature linking it to a shortened anal genital distance in, in rodents. So people start to have these visions of, of using these products and having their orifices merge into one. What we need to point out here is that the, the human is not a giant rat, neither is the human a giant test tube. And the amount of phthalate that we're exposed to in our daily life is unlikely to have the same kind of effect as we've seen with huge doses in rats. Can we guarantee that there's no possibility of long-term effect? Of course not, because science can never prove a negative. You can't prove that something cannot happen. But you make decisions based on the best available evidence at any time. Thank you very much. Thanks.